Hello, and welcome to Backer Breaks It Down. In this episode, we are going to look at power functions in their graphs. We're going to focus on end behavior. Okay, so I had you guys do a little investigation, and this appears in your notes packet on page four. Um, so I had you graph various groups of power functions in Desmos, and I asked you about end behavior. Remember, end behavior, um, this is the notation that we use. We use a limit notation, okay? That x arrow negative infinity, that's the end behavior on the left. And the x arrow positive infinity, that's the end behavior on the right. And so when you are identifying end behavior of a function, you want to think about the y values. Like what are the y values approaching? They could be approaching um, a particular number or they could be getting larger and larger and larger, hence infinity, or smaller and smaller and smaller, so negative infinity, okay? Um, so the first group I had you look at was even positive powers, and perhaps you noticed that all the even positive power graphs had a parabolic shape to it, okay? And so what that means is that whenever your exponent is an even positive number, the end behavior is gonna be equal, so equal on the left, equal on the right, and they're both going to be going up towards infinity. Now, one thing I want to caution you is this is true when k is positive, because remember, our power functions are written k times x to the a power. So in all of these explorations, we're working with k is positive, okay? Um, and then this even positive power is referring to the exponent, okay? Um, so we're looking at end behavior of positive infinity on the left and positive infinity on the right. Um, when your exponent is an odd positive number, you'll have opposite end behavior. So on the left, it'll go down towards negative infinity, and on the right, it'll go up towards positive infinity. Um, negative powers, um, so this is an even negative um, power function, and what you'll notice is that on the left end, and on the right end, our graph is leveling off, but is never quite crossing the x-axis. So what that means is that the end behavior on the left equals the end behavior on the right, and they're both zero. The same thing happens for odd negative powers. You're going to have an end behavior of zero on the left and an end behavior of zero on the right. Um, rational powers, so we're talking fractions. So like these three graphs here, notice we have, um, all of our exponents are the fraction like one over an even number. So we're talking even denominator powers. And what's interesting about these is that there's no left end behavior, okay? Because like they don't go left forever, they stop at zero. So there's no left end behavior. And then on the right side, they are slowly, increasing indefinitely. So on the right, we would say the limit as x approaches infinity, because that's the right end behavior, is infinity. So it's slowly getting bigger and bigger. It just doesn't like really look like it because like it's doing it very slowly. Um, odd denominator powers have left and right end behavior. On the left, it is getting smaller and smaller, so negative infinity on the right, it's getting larger and larger, so positive infinity. So here I have a table that summarizes all of our findings, all right? That first row is showing you the left end behavior, the bottom row is showing you the right end behavior, okay? Um, keep in mind that if k is negative, these things will flip signs, because um, like if there's a negative out in front, of your power function, that means there's a reflection over the x-axis, so that means we are going to see a sign change on the end behavior. Um, if you encounter a limit problem, like in one through six below there, um, if you see any constants, the limit of a constant, whether it's left end or right end behavior, is always going to be equal to the constant itself. Okay, so I want to apply all of this power functions and behavior stuff with maybe some constants and I want to find the end behaviors of the functions below. Okay. So in number one it says the limit as x approaches negative infinity of x to the fourth power. 
So the exponent is even, it's an even integer. So it's following the, this rule here where the exponent is an even integer. Um, we don't have anything to worry about here, whether it's been flipped or any constants, so we're good. And we wanna pay attention to left or right end behavior, regardless if it's even, it's equal. And in this one, they're both gonna be positive infinity. Taking a look at number two, um, looking at first like this part, x to the negative first power. So we're talking an odd negative, all right? And so no matter what, the end behavior is zero. So the two here has an end behavior of two, but the x to the negative one has an end behavior of zero. And if you go two times zero, you're gonna get zero, okay? Um, in number three, we have a sum. So we're gonna have to be a little bit careful here. What I need to do is I need to be like, well, what's the end behavior of t to the negative third? What's the end behavior of two? Well, t to the negative third, that is a negative odd exponent. So it has an end behavior of zero no matter what. And the constant of two, well, the limit of a constant is the constant itself. So it has an end behavior of two. And so if I add these two things together, zero plus two, I'm gonna get two. Okay. So I did have to treat each of those kind of like individually, and then I combine the result at the end, right? In number four, we have the limit as x approaches negative infinity of five minus seven times y to the negative second power. Well, five is a constant. It'll have a limit equal to itself, so five. Then we'll have minus seven is a constant times y to the negative second power. Well, negative two, that's a negative even, no matter what, the end behavior is zero. So we have five minus seven times zero, which is just five. In number five, we have the limit as x approaches infinity of x to the one third power. So we're talking a rational exponent odd denominator. So rational exponent odd denominator, that's our end behavior. We are interested in the right end behavior, so that would be positive infinity. Whoa. <laughs> and then lastly, we have um, the limit as x approaches negative infinity of negative x to the 10th power. Um, so the 10th power gives us an even exponent. So the end behavior is positive infinity on both the left and the right, but there's that negative that we have to deal with. So we're talking negative times infinity. You can think about it that way. Negative times infinity is negative infinity. So that's how we can find the end behavior of power functions um, with and without shifts, because anything where there was addition or subtraction here, there was a like a vertical shift, right? Okay. Um, but basically, when it comes to just power functions, it's all about the exponent. Is it an even integer, an odd integer, a negative even integer, a negative odd integer, a rational one over the even number, or a rational one over the odd number? So look at that exponent to help you determine the end behavior. Pay attention to whether or not it has been flipped. And that is how Packer breaks it down.